do the teams NHL, OHL, CHL, NCAA? Do they make mistakes? A hundred percent. And they're not idiots for it. Everyone does. They make mistakes. They make mistakes. Why? Well, they might look at someone's potential and overestimate what that player can bring to can bring. They might overestimate or underestimate how much work that kid is going to put in. The grit factor again. Do they have the? Do I have someone that appears to have grit, but really doesn't? And so we talked about this a couple uh, podcasts ago. Is like, do you work hard because you enjoy? Because you're good. And it's easy and it appears like you're working hard because you're out on the ice doing the things and doing the workouts. Or are you actually working hard? And 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 this is that grit factor again. It's like, do you have the grit? Because, again, going back to this, like even a freshman in college, I think, I'm, I'm positive, is when you step onto the ice on a, one of these big teams, the Michigan or colleges or the OHL, when you step on the ice, you realize real, real quick that – you're not going to be the star on the team, most likely. You're going to have to earn your stripes to get up there. So that's the the thing. Is and so with with do they make mistakes? Yes, they make mistakes. They make a, sometimes they just make a bad pick or or a pick that after a year or two you realize yeah that kid went in the first round and he really was a fourth or fifth rounder that could play in the league. He's okay, but the fourth rounder or fifth rounder was way better or several of them around the league. So that happens all the time, and. uh and and that's why a lot of times you'll see a late pick make a team or a, a free agent make the team, um, because they come to camp and they're they sit there and they go I, I I didn't see what I see now, and they they impress the brass right yeah so. the that I want to just touch that grit thing again I remember I was doing uh, hill sprints with one of my buddies, and he was he's just faster than me, he's just faster so it doesn't matter how hard I try he's faster. And so I remember getting to the top of the hill. We did like four or five sprints and he had beat me every time. And we got to the top top of the hill on the fifth one. And he's like, oh, like that's that's five oh or something. And he was like, like rubbing in my face that he beat me. And I remember saying to him, like in the moment, I was like, just because you're beating me doesn't mean you're working harder. That's what I said. And and that you see that change over time. Like you just point out maybe the guy that went first round and then he really, after a year, you see, ah, he was more like a fourth, fifth rounder or other guys catch up or, or whatever. That's one of those controllable factors that just because a guy's faster than you today or they're better than you at a certain thing today, if you're pushing, you can, you can catch them. You can catch them. And that happens all the time to your point. You know, we got guys that go in there. They had that, that, you know, whatever mentality in the off season where they're just committed and they're just dialed into it. And, they show up at camp and shock people because they were just willing to close that gap. You know, they were willing to do the work to close that gap. And, and that's something that can be really, really, I, I want to say undervalued, but it's hard for people to see that because you don't see the progress right now today. You know, you'll see it after a, a full summer of hard work or a full off season of hard work, you'll show up to camp and then you see it. But the whole time you're doing the work during the summer, you're not seeing it. Yeah. And, and that goes back thing. to our first quote today again, too. It's yeah. there's, there's no, you, you, you take that sprint thing that you did with the guy. If there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no yeah. harm. Yeah. And if you would have said, exactly. yeah, I'm 5-0 on you, and you said, yeah, I'm just, you're better and why try? Right. But you, you said, no, I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to keep working. And that's the, the, the nose to the grindstone. I'm going to do me. You do you. And at the end of the day, yeah, we'll let's see. see what happens. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens, yeah, right? For sure. And it's important. So, um, so it's not, it's not really like it's not important where you are at 16, 17. It no, it is. If you, to get on a path, you want to be to a certain level, but you want to make sure that you are. Wh- what do you want to get? I mean, we talk about this all the time at twenty, twenty one, twenty two. If you want to be a pro or get your college paid for and all that kind of stuff, that's what's the important thing. Not sixteen. So that's why you got to eliminate the crap the crap, the, what everybody else is saying, and just do your thing. Because, you know, you might not be the best player right now. And you might not have, you know, you might be your drafter. You have three hairs poking out of your armpits, right? You're not ready, right? You might be talented as hell. You're not ready, but are you going to do the work? Do you still believe in yourself? Do you, do you still get to the rank? Do you enjoy it? Like the passion and, and what, what the Angela Duckworth was saying, all right? Interest and passion and, and work ethic to, to keep going. Because there's a lot of things that can change in those times. So where do you want to be at 20? So the thing is now, so you get drafted or you don't, right? 
The next thing is you got to go to the camp. If you go to the camp, um, to an extent, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to say this like to be clear. It doesn't matter what drow- round you're drafted to a degree. Okay, so if you go to if you go to camp as a first, second, and third round pick, your first year or two, your first couple rounders have a well. Your first rounder will play because that's just the way it's set up. Uh, at least he's got to play 30 games, and then your second rounder has um, has to make it because there might not, there's not a lot of room in these camps in, in on these teams. Okay, um, and then after that, it doesn't matter where you're drafted because, and I say this both ways. You could you could go to camp and say it doesn't matter where I was drafted because there's only one spot and the first rounder is getting it and I, there's no chance of making it anyways or there's a long shot or you can go there and say it doesn't matter where I was drafted because there's two spots on this team and I'm freaking taking one if it takes me two years I'm taking it I'm gonna work my nuts off to get that spot I'm gonna do whatever it takes and that's the attitude that you want now when you do get to camp you're gonna notice that. Um, you're going to notice the big names that were drafted and the kids from the year before or the kids on the team from um, that were on the team. Um, but you're going to notice that there's free agents there that are good, that you might go, oh, God, uh, Jack Guy's brother was one of them this year. Free agent, kind of a few teams that wanted to sign him. Didn't get drafted, just like his brother. Maybe it's going to be the same thing. Maybe not. Who knows? But good player, good, good power forward, man. Does things that other people don't do. Yeah. I sorry to cut you off. I'm just because I keep thinking the contrast between because you said you know you can go into it either way, thinking there's no chance or there's a chance either way. And I love that because we have the, that example between Charlie and Seabass with our guys, right? You got Charlie going in. He was the second round guy where it's like, yep, here you get this. And then you have Seabass, who was the other one that was 12th round pick and just went in and took a spot. 16 took a year spot. Old, 16 year old playing. So it, it happens, man. And, and yeah, well, we got a lot of examples. Yeah, and to, like I'm saying to your point, like there, you don't want to not. To, it's to a degree. To a degree. It's to a degree. Yeah. But there is a degree. Oh, so, there's so a degree. It's, so it's possible. You know? There's and, a lot of players. And at the very least, you can go and, you can go and make an impression. Amadeus Lombardi, Flint, Flint Firebirds, 13th round of the Flint Firebirds. I don't know this kid. All I know is he's really good. He went fourth round to the Detroit Red Wings last year, and he's good. Four, he, 13th round to the Flint Firebirds. Will you get drafted in the 13th round? In all realistic, like if you're sitting there with your family and stuff, you sit there and you go, I guess I'll give it a shot. Or you go there with an attitude that or you go there and, and maybe your ignorance is bliss and you don't realize whatever. And or you go there and say, I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to make this team because I know I'm good. The enemy within will do you right. So um, and then you got late picks who make the team. And I mean, on, on every OHL team, you have. On every team, there's one or two free agents that make it. So this isn't like pie in the sky crap, right? Free agents that make it, and you got late round picks that take spots. And 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 I guess why? How can that even be, right? If someone is so good at 15, 16 to go 300 or 250 players before this guy, how can how can that be? And that to me is and and I I really you know. The more I, I, the more I've seen, I mean, there's a lot of kids that we train both in the gym and on the ice that have talent. They have it. There's, there's some, some serious talent. And I've seen kids, you know, cause I watched so many OHL games that the talent is there. It's there, man. But the grit is not. And, and the grit just simply meaning the talent hasn't been put to work. And the quote, hard work beats talent when talent does not work hard is, is so true. And and you you'll see that with people that, you know, a lot of the times the kid that gets the higher pick or that wants to be the skill guy, it's it's fine, but you'll see someone else just give you something else and 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 do it consistently, and and there's that hunger, and it's really really important. Like at every level that you play, every practice, like it's so easy to get comfortable and say, okay, it's another practice, another week, but it goes by so fast, and it's the kid that goes to the rink and and he and he does the workout. Like I'm talking the OHL, right? Or junior B. You get there and you do the little extra things. It's that kid. So the the the, the talent, you know, if, if if you're silky smooth with your smooth with your hand and you can go down the ice ten and twos and stuff, that's great. It's really impressive. But it really doesn't help when Arbor's coming at you and gonna take your head off. Now what do you have? 
right? And and hopefully you're slick and smart enough and you work those skills enough. But like, there's the grit guys that they won't have it. <laughs> they yeah, won't have it. Well, there's this, these are these are intangible qualities that make it really hard to be a scout and really hard to be a team mm-hmm. because you can't measure these things. Yeah, that's why you have to actually you can play. Be fooled. Yeah, that's why you have to actually play the game because if everything was just how it is on paper. That that'd be real. Life would be really easy if it was just how it is on paper. But you actually have to drop the puck and play the game, and that's where you start to see these guys pop out of nowhere that had this quality that you couldn't measure until you watch them in a game, and they have to go against a guy that's better than them. You know, if if you're if you play on uh, the Toronto Marlies and you guys didn't lose a game all year and you're the first line centerman, it's like I'm not saying it's always an easy ride, but it's pr- a pretty easy ride for most of the year. You take that kid and throw him on the worst team in the OHL because he was a high pick and he has to take that first or second line centerman position and deliver against guys that are four or five years older that want to come and rip your head off, like you said. And they were all first round, second round, third round picks too. Maybe that kid doesn't have the thing that you thought. You know, and maybe the kid that you picked in the seventh round has it. And now he's playing first round or first line on the wing. And he's one of your better guys. And that first round guy, he's kind of fading off or, or not, but maybe he is. And, and that's, that's the thing that makes judging young kids difficult. And so that's why there's a lot of, a lot of play to get better and to, to make an impression. Yeah.